is an amazing room. Are many, is anybody here from a city? Who's from a city? I'm from New York City. Is anyone not from a city? Someone from the country? Because this talk is about cities. It's about a technology called cities. It's one of the oldest technologies we have. And uh, I believe that the cities we have will be 10 times bigger in the years ahead. So I guess New York will one day be bigger than the population today of Germany. Maybe it's 10 or 12 million people now, it'll be 100 million. And I wanted to talk to you why I think that. So I work in cities, actually. The business that Nico and I have, uh, Notel, and now we're in Berlin with Ahoy Berlin, is uh, a business about offices. About half of cities are offices. And we run these agile headquarters for big companies. So we either do them for Microsoft or Starbucks or The Body Shop, and we make them get bigger and smaller whenever we need to for our customers. And as we've been working in cities, I've been learning a few things about buildings and cities and the way they work, and I wanted to share a few of them with you. I have to be fast, so I will be. I hope it's okay with you. Here's a fire. We, um, we didn't have any rules for cities for a long time, and the only uh, start for it was when London had a fire in 1666. That's when people started having actual codes and plans for cities. And still, they're not perfect, but the codes are the, the map that makes cities work. Uh, Rem Koolhaas uh, has a beautiful image here, and I think it captures something that I think is very true about cities and the reason we're in cities. This image from uh, his book Delirious New York is about, I guess it's buildings having sex, but the science writer, the, the English writer, Matt Ridley, says that cities are where ideas go to have sex. And I think that's the reason why cities really work, because they create new ideas, they create possibility of conferences like this one. Uh, the, uh, the French architect Le Corbusier, uh, his line was that buildings are machines for living in. And I think the way that cities work is exactly that. A city is a machine, and it's a piece of technology. It's a place that we live, but it's a place that has uh, some opportunity and also problems. And these are some of the things I wanted to share with you, because cities are changing. They're not the same as they were before. Uh, this is Corbusier's vision of a fabulous future city. It doesn't look so nice. It's actually just one building in the countryside in France. Sometimes the, the best ideas seem to come out a bit strange. And I think that's very true in many of the problems and the technologies that we're deploying in cities today. Uh, this is 3000 BC. There were only a few cities. Over time, it turns out, the population centers in the world moved steadily, got denser. And the trend, really, this 5,000-year-long trend, is that cities are getting bigger, getting denser, accumulating more and more people. It would be very difficult to bet against this trend, I think. There are people who like to come up with ideas like, well, the internet or the blockchain or whatever will turn this around. But in the last 20 years, the internet has made cities work better in so many ways. It's how I came to the conference today. Because of the internet and mobile technology, things that we've all worked on, they're making cities cleaner and faster and more efficient in so many interesting ways. Let's see. Um, a city at night. These are the cities at night. Look where they are. But if you put all the people in the world into just one city that has the density of Paris, it fits in this small part of America. We have a lot of world. Sometimes we worry that we're running out of Earth. But if it was all Paris, it would look like this. If it was all Houston, it would look like this. Houston is probably one of the worst cities in the world, I can tell you humbly, from America. We have some cities that are not amazing. And I'll show you some problems with Houston. One of the problems though with cities is that there are also not cities. In America, we have a big problem. The blue was Hillary Clinton's uh, vote. Unfortunately, the red uh, voted for someone else. The economic output of America overwhelmingly supported Hillary Clinton, and somehow these places, these places that don't produce as much economic output had enough vote for the election to go the other direction. If cities are working so well and producing so much of the economic output and productivity of, of our society, still other people are involved. These other people have to be part uh, of, what makes, of what makes the world work. I don't think that we've figured it out in America, and I think in every country in the world, I, I, think, we have, I think we have these problems here in Europe also. The future of cities. This is New York. It won't be long. This is one scared rendering. It's based on fear, I think, and it might be right. I mean, when the water just comes a few inches higher, do you see that middle part? See that middle part? That's the part of Manhattan you used to like. That's Greenwich Village and the Flatiron District in Chelsea. The part that you don't like is the part that's still there. But here's a more optimistic image from some architects. They think that we turn cities into some kind of fabulous paradise. Can you imagine New York as a water city? It's hard to imagine. 
But there is a water city in America. This was uh, 18 months ago in, uh, in Houston. We have these hurricanes, and from time to time, a lot of water comes in. So we turned Houston uh, into, uh, into a water city for a little while. It wasn't, I guess we didn't expect it. We'll have to start worrying more about climate change. But there are some beautiful cities that are water cities, and maybe the architect's vision of the paradise of the future isn't so crazy. I mean, if you've been to Venice, Venice works. I guess Venice works for the handful of people who live there. I think 50,000 people only are living in Venice because everyone else is visiting. And they've invented these beautiful ways of getting around Venice. This is from uh, James Bond. But the exact same boat is, is available for only 100 euros per hour today in Venice. And this is an idea from Carlo Ratti, uh, the Italian architect. It's a, uh, I guess as the waters rise on the Seine, we'll have to find nice things to do besides the bateau mouche. And here we have a bunch of people exercising, producing the power to move their little mobile gym along the Seine. Maybe that could be an office. So I, um, I don't know if you guys are makers. You know any makers? Sometimes makers have crazy ideas. Uh, one of the makers from Maker Fair uh, two years ago showed me this project called the Tiny Bus Collective. And what she did is she took a little school bus, because in America we have all these school buses. They're not worth a lot of money. You can buy them for a little bit. And this school bus, she, um, I guess she decided to make it a little mobile home. Uh, this is a joke. It's from some American program called The Office, where they move their office onto a, onto a bus. But I guess her idea and, and the joke from Hollywood are not totally insane. Uh, this is our own bus, the no-tell bus that we drive around New York, and we make fun of the co-working companies. And we say, well, you should graduate from co-working into a real office, get out of this school. Uh, and I guess that guy doesn't like it. He's been coming after me all the time. But we're not the only ones who had this idea, and it's not just the makers who had this idea. I think this image is from uh, IDEO. Uh, IDEO has a rendering of the mobile vehicle of the future. The mobile vehicle of the future, you don't need to steer, you don't need to pay attention. Maybe the time that you spend traveling around uh, is time you can actually spend usefully with other people. And here you see it's a beautiful view going along the ocean, and they're having a great meeting. It looks like fun. Uh, this one is from Daimler. Uh, I guess she's also doing some work in the back of her car. Uh, Daimler actually showed me an amazing concept for a bus. So they, they, they're one of the world's largest bus producers, the, the, the big um, vehicles. And they, um, they are building uh, an office on wheels. It, so my, the makers and our little school bus, which is a joke, isn't so funny. I think it may be the future, actually. It turns the roads into uh, offices. This is a funny company called Regis that maybe you heard about. They also do something in offices, and they have a very ugly picture here. But even they are onto the idea that maybe the car is a place that people will be doing some work in the future. Work on wheels. Uh, maybe you saw this. This is also, can anyone tell me what, uh, how many wheels do you see in this picture? Yeah, it's bicycles in China. I guess it's taken from high above. But it's a big trash heap of bicycles. But this is happening everywhere. I think this was uh, Vienna uh, eight, eight months ago, I saw. Uh, and maybe, I, you know, I'm noticing a little bit in Berlin. I haven't found the, the, the graveyard of all the bicycle bones in Berlin yet, but I think I have seen these bicycles. They're spreading all around the world. I'm really amazed, actually. I made an investment in a company uh, seven years ago, and the guy told me, one day, you will be able to open your phone, press a button, there'll be a bicycle just nearby, you jump on it, you ride wherever you want, and then you park it wherever you want. It will be a dream in the future. Six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, I thought, oh, God, when will this ever happen? I think I'm going to lose my money. So two years ago, I just said, forget it. I've lost the money. I'll just be friendly to this guy and help him. And then two months ago, Uber bought the business for almost half a billion dollars. <laughs> so how do people get around in cities? Uh, you might think, so this is me guessing. I was in Vienna, and I was doing this little guess. You know, I was thinking, well, how do they get around? Vienna. I mean, Vienna, this tiny little place. They must be walking and riding bicycles, isn't it? But it turns out it's mostly cars, even in Vienna. And if you did the math here on Berlin, I think you would find it even more lopsided. It's astonishing. It has to change. And it is changing, I guess, faster than I thought. I had already written it off to zero, and apparently Uber believes it will happen. Here's another city. This is an American city. It's a really... I hate this city, man. It's Houston, Texas. I mean, who makes a city look like this? Look at it. It's empty. This is the downtown of the city, and half of it is parking. Actually, 25% of this city is parking, the red. Houston is all parking. But when the cars are moving around on their own, and you don't have to leave them anywhere, I guess this is real estate. I guess this is the next park, where maybe you put this here. The shipping containers, uh, these are makers too, right? I mean, I don't know if, how many of you live in a shipping container home? Not me. 
even in the country, no one's living in a shipping container home. Well, this is an idea, and it seemed like a crazy idea, but it's across all the design magazines and everyone's dreaming, I'm dreaming, I want to have one of these. Uh, but now people are actually building them. <clears throat> Maybe, <clears throat> this is Brooklyn, <clears throat> not far from where I live actually. I mean, it's like eight shipping containers, they stack them and they turn it into a house. I wonder, there must be something like this in Berlin by now. So the Chinese, of course you think the shipping container is cool, a modular home that you make as a little craft project, but the Chinese, this is a nine hour railway station. This is 2,000 people that showed up for work uh, at 10 p.m., and by 7 a.m. they had built a railway station. How could they possibly do it? Well, it's because all they did on the site is put things together. They didn't do any construction. They dug a hole and they dropped these things on the location. This is a company called BSB from northern China. They build buildings, but they build them in factories. They put them on trucks. They bring them to the site. They drop it all in place. There's no welders. Do you see, how many people do you see? There's like four. And if you go find it on YouTube, I mean, it's 18 days to build a 50-story building. They're cranking them out uh, across China at the moment. And when they put them in place, it's a completely modular design. So the box that goes in, now this is a similar company called Forest City Ratner doing it in Brooklyn. They did one apartment building. It wasn't easy in New York to, to do it with boxes, but that's an apartment. You stack them one by one by one, and then you're done in two months. But you can still use those techniques, actually, that's to build whole buildings, and this is us doing it at Notel, we're doing it inside buildings. Those are meeting rooms and dividers, that's a meeting room. Once upon a time you had to have a bunch of people doing paint and drying, and this comes through the elevator, you assemble it like it's a kit from Ikea. This is a Notel. This is not a kit from Ikea, it's mostly from eBay. We bought a bunch of old junk and we decorated a room. This used to be a server room in one of the buildings that we run, and maybe you know what a server room is, it's full of computers and it's hot and it's smelly. Well, no one has any servers in their buildings anymore, they're all somewhere else in the cloud. And as we're taking over buildings, we're changing them. This is the music room. And it doesn't look like a meeting room, right? It's just a place to hang out, there's a record player. And here's some of my colleagues. They're working. It doesn't look like work, I guess. What we have noticed is that work and life are together. Not so long ago, you started having offices in your home. What a weird thing that you'd put a desk in your home and do work as if you're in the office but at home. Now you don't really need that desk anymore. I don't have a desk anymore. I just put my laptop on my lap and I sit on the couch. Actually, I sit just the way these guys are sitting. And I suppose that means we have to put a couch in the office too. And I don't know how much of your office looks like this, but I think the future is that your office will look more like your home. Let's see how fast it goes. And, 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 and maybe that means it becomes a place uh, for having sex. I saved a few minutes so that people could ask me questions, and then maybe Nico or somebody is going to help us moderate that, yeah? Who would like to ask a question? About the future of cities and the 10x city. Here? I'll repeat your question if I can hear you. spotlight to there. So the question was, when all this stuff is happening, will people still be building skyscrapers? Why would you do it in the sexy city? I actually like that line. Maybe I'm going to change my talk. This is a prototype. The next version is going to be called the sexier city. The, uh, I think the future, yeah. I think, I think people like being with people. I think the future of cities actually is more bigger, denser. I think the vision may not be as cool and uh, architectural as Corbusier tried to build around the world as he was planning these grids. It might look more like Shanghai or more like downtown New York. You can throw this into the audience if they have any questions. This is exciting. This is very exciting. So yeah, more big buildings. Who wants to catch this thing? Who's next? I'm just gonna throw it and then someone's gonna have to ask. Is that how it works actually? Or do I wait for someone to ask? I'm gonna try to throw it there. <laughs> You're supposed to give a header. You're supposed to give a header. Hi. Uh, well, I'm from Brazil, Sao Paulo. It's one of the densest yes. cities in the world. Super city. And, uh, well, the, the thing is that on 
downtown we have a lot of empty buildings there, yeah. empty apartments, because the price is too high, people can't afford it. So how do we solve this problem? Have you seen uh, any ideas how to solve this problem? Well, I hear, oh, yeah, it's a great question. It's a really good question. And the problem is not only in Sao Paulo. I mean, the problem is in London and in New York and in Los Angeles. As these super cities are happening, not everyone can afford to live in them. Uh, the old mayor of New York, he would never say this publicly, Mike Bloomberg, but when he was planning many of the things that they did in New York over the last 15 years, what he would say to his colleagues, and some of them are with us at Notel now, he would say, these ideas about um, affordability, they're so difficult because New York is a luxury city. New York is like the LVMH of cities. It, there isn't an affordable, there isn't a cheap chic version of New York was his observation. Because as New York was working better and better and better, the jobs that were in New York are getting denser and denser in terms of their revenue. So every headcount in New York, because of technology and globalization, if someone works in a company, they generate more revenue now than they did 30 years ago, which means they're paid more, which means they're richer, which means they have, they're ready to buy beautiful apartments. And then what about everyone else? Often, when I sit with policy people, what they worry about is how do we make the housing more affordable to more people. What I don't hear them worry about, and that they should, is what will these people do in cities that is productive that they can be paid more to do? This is actually a, a, a huge puzzle. Because of technology automation, all this, the logistics, the taxi drivers, those jobs will be changing. And unless those people become hedge fund managers, technologists, whatever, th there may not be a place for them in cities. It's a terrible problem, and I don't think there's a simple solution for that one. You can check this again, or if you want, you can also take one of the Questions from Slido. Oh, yeah. Or okay. you can throw this again, whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to answer this Hyperloop thing. I think the Hyperloop thing is uh, part of the... Well, I'm going to answer it and throw it, or should I wait for some... Maybe yeah. someone wants to raise their hand, and then I'll throw it, and then I'll answer the Hyperloop. Raise your hand if you have a question. Has a question. Another question in this direction, that direction. Transportation and logistics is a big driver of the change of cities, yeah? So Hyperloop is just one example. Let's see how many, how fast, how far. But that parking thing, that's the main thing. I mean, a third of Berlin is probably also parking, maybe a quarter. It's all free land. It's just waiting to be developed. The city itself owns the roads. The roads are another 20%. Most of the city around you is transportation for cars, to move them and park them. It's going to be a massive change. And actually, one of the changes might be the people that own all the buildings, their property will face competition from all this new property that's coming available. Maybe it's a chance to finally build parks or to build affordable places for people to live. Maybe that chance is there. It's coming very soon. You know all these, the, the, the self-driving stuff is on the roads being tested. I hope we'll make it our mission. I see a hand here and here. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, I'm sorry. But uh, um, can, can people ask you questions yeah, over of course, Twitter? Of or? course, at Amol, A-M-O-L. Yeah, thank Easy. you. Easy, thank you thank very you. much, Amol. Thank that you. was great. Thank you so much.